Welcome to Silverlight for What's New, WCF RIA Services. My name is Bill Loden, and in the next few minutes, I'd like to do a quick demo of RIA Services and Silverlight 4. I'll start with a new project in Visual Studio 2010. Now I'm going to do a Silverlight application, and I'll simply call it AdventureWorks. But I should point out that uh, if I switch the framework version to .NET 4, I'll get a couple of more options, including a Silverlight business application and a RIA services class library. Now the business application will include RIA services automatically, but if you take a regular application, you can actually enable WCF RIA services simply by uh, selecting that checkbox at project creation time. So as with any Silverlight project, uh, the default is to get two projects in a single solution, the web project and, of course, the Silverlight project. Now, if I go to the Silverlight project, you'll notice that there's several service model uh, namespaces that are automatically included. And if I bring up the properties of the Silverlight project, you should see that under properties, there's actually a RIA services link. So by enabling RIA services, what I've done is actually tie the Silverlight project to the web project for RIA services. So the first thing I'm going to do now is uh, add a new ADO.NET Entity Data Model. And I'm adding this to the web project. So uh, again, with RIA services, the assumption is that the data lives on the server side, and we want to be able to access it from the Silverlight client. So I'll just go through the steps here. I've already got a connection, a data connection. So I'll choose the AdventureWorks data connection. And then it's going to retrieve the information through that connection. And then let's say I want to grab the tables and views. And I can be selective here. So for instance, maybe I only want the project or product data. Uh, I'll clear out the other tables. And so I'll take the product tables and the, the views and then click Finish. Now what that's going to do is it's going to produce this EDMX file, which uh, you can actually view uh, visually. And uh, let's build it first. Uh, it is generated code that needs to be compiled. So I always find it's useful to uh, rebuild after adding things like this so that uh, all the tools work as expected. So this is what the data model look like, looks like. And you can see the uh, key relationships are identified. And it's pretty smart. You have something like product category, and it'll pluralize the entity set name uh, to product categories. So it'll uh, substitute S or IES where appropriate. So next I'm going to add another new item. And this item is going to be, uh, well, I'll, I'll just find it under the web template. And it's called a domain service class. So this is going to essentially represent the service that the, that the Silverlight client connects to. And so we'll call it AdventureWorks Domain Service click Add, and then the uh, a dialog appears where it's automatically defaulted to the entities that I've already defined. I just need to select which entities I want, and I'll select them all and make them all editable, which means that from the client side, I'll be able to push changes back up into the, the service. Now, this is generated code, but it's generated code that's meant to be modified. So notice there's some to-dos in there. And there's some various things that, that, that we might want to do. For instance, the get products, maybe we want to uh, sort the results automatically. So we'll just add an order by with a lambda indicating that we want to order it by the name of the product. So every time we call that uh, get products query, we'll, it'll automatically be uh, sorted for us by name. And that'll happen on the service side. And then uh, in order, it'll pass down to the, uh, to the client. All right, so now I'm ready to switch to the client side, to the Silverlight app, and actually work on this. So notice that I've got an empty, um, empty file. And over in the data sources view, I've got this products table. Well, let's say I want to display it as a data grid. I simply select data grid, and then drag it right onto the design surface. It'll take a moment for it to work out all the changes it's going to make, because it's actually going to uh, generate quite a bit of XAML uh, that displays all the columns and so forth. So after just a, a moment or two, we should be able to view the data grid properties. And from that, uh, I'm actually going to make a few changes. So uh, we'll reset some of the values that are set by default. For instance, uh, height and horizontal alignment and margins, because we want it to just take up the full available space. And one more thing will be 
the width. We'll reset that as well. So let's rebuild that. Confirm that everything works and then we can go ahead and fire it up to see what we've done. Now uh, while we're waiting for that, uh, you'll notice that I, I haven't written any code other than adding that one sort of optional order by clause, but everything else was sort of done with tools. So the RIA services tooling is pretty powerful. So I get the, the page with the data grid and after a moment uh, the data loads in there asynchronously and you can see that the entire contents of that table is now displayed. And so I can scroll all the way through the data. It's a fair amount of data, so data grid uh, would be a, a appropriate choice. Notice that it is sorted by name, but we can change that sort order if we want because that's one of the benefits of data grid. Uh, we can simply uh, change it to sort by category ID. So that's uh, sort of the no code, no frills version of RIA services. So next what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional query. So we'll just take the existing get products query and modify it so that we have a get products by category ID. So this will take a parameter of category ID and then we'll add a where clause into the query where we we query based on the product category ID um, being equal to the parameter category ID. So this is a minor change but now it gives us an additional an additional query that we can use. So we'll go ahead and build that. Uh, we want to build it on, because remember this is in the service and so uh, at build time that connection is made to the client so that from the client side we, we see that. So I'll show you what I mean. If we go back to the XAML, let's take away everything. So everything that was generated for us when we, we dragged that uh, products table onto the design surface, I'm going to replace it with a simple list box and then we'll switch to the uh, design view and then go over to the data sources and instead of showing it as a data grid I'm going to select none and uh, that'll make sense in just a bit. I'm also going to switch it to the get products by category query and then drag that table onto the design surface just like I did before. Now notice that it generates a little form for me that requests category ID. And that's because it's smart enough to know that I need a parameter. So it adds this stack panel that includes a text box, a label, and a button. Uh, in order to fix the layout, I'm going to actually add a, a couple rows to the grid. Uh, the first row I want to auto size, and that's actually going to include the stack panel where uh, the little query uh, tool is, and then uh, the list box that actually dis is going to display the data is going to be in the second row or row one. Now notice the stack panel. Right? I can leave that without a, a row because I want it to be in row zero. So without uh, any other changes, let's go ahead and see what happens when we run this. So all I did was bind that data source to a list box and then, and then it automatically uh, tied it to the text box and to that load button. So then when we put in a category and click load, we get some results. Now the results aren't very exciting at this point because we haven't done anything to uh, actually display the results in a sort of user-friendly fashion. So that's the last thing I'll do is just paste in some XAML. So we'll go up and find that list box. And then I'll just paste in an item template that includes a data template. So it's just a stack panel with uh, two text blocks. And there's some data binding and even some string formatting to display the name and the price that are coming from each, uh, each entity that's returned by that query. So now, with uh, you know, very little effort, we can now use this query to actually display uh, some more user-friendly, some more attractive results. And of course, you can picture what you can do with Silverlight. Thanks for watching this video, and if you're interested in a copy of the source code, please visit my blog where you can download the source code for this demo and for others in this video series. Thanks again.